Can I ask you to be seated just for a brief moment? I just want to welcome everybody here again on the second day of the Novena and also the Feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We had a wonderful afternoon, tremendous crowds this afternoon, and we have been on the go since 5 a.m. with our first Mass at 6 a.m., which uh, saw a full church in the parish church and a full apparition chapel with walkers from all over, as is the tradition uh, uh, at this time of the year. So I'd like to welcome all of you here this evening, wherever you've come from, near or far, pilgrims and parishioners and friends alike. I welcome our wonderful choir, as you've just heard, the Dunmore Choir with their director, Joan MacDonald, their organist, David Ford, and also soloists, Martin Silk and Mary Flaherty. Uh, I've the privilege of, of uh, welcoming as well all our concelebrating priests here this evening. You're most welcome. Uh, joining me here in the sanctuary, along with Father Patrick Burke, the Master of Ceremonies this, after, this evening, 
is the Archbishop of Armagh, Archbishop Eamon Martin. Archbishop Eamon, you're most welcome, and it's great to have you here on the Feast of the Assumption, and thank you for being here with us this evening. So I invite now Archbishop Eamon to lead us in the celebration of the Eucharist, if you'd like to stand, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Peace be with you. Thank you for that welcome, and thank you for coming to Knock this evening. I know that whenever we come to Knock, we come with many thoughts in our hearts, with many prayers and many attentions on our minds. But we're here together to spend this time in the presence of God, knowing also that Mary, our Heavenly Mother, is with us. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. <laughs> May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. The sanctuary of God in heaven opened, and the Ark of the Covenant could be seen inside it. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman adorned with the sun, standing on the moon, and with the twelve stars on her head for a crown. She was pregnant and in labor, crying aloud in the pangs of childbirth. Then a second sign appeared in the sky, a huge red dragon which had seven heads and ten horns, and each of the seven heads crowned with a coronet. Its tail dragged a third of the stars from the sky and dropped them to the earth. And the dragon stopped in front of the woman as she was having the child, so that he could eat it as soon as it was born from its mother. The woman brought a male child into the world the son who was to rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And the child was taken straight up to God and to his throne, while the woman escaped into the desert, where God had made a place of safety ready. Then I heard a voice from heaven, Victory and power and empire forever have been won by our God, and all that parity for his Christ. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Death came through one man, and in the same way, the resurrection of the dead has come through one man. Just as all men die in Adam, so all men will be brought to life in Christ, but all of them in their proper order. Christ as the first fruits, and then, after the coming of Christ, those who belong to him. After that will come the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, having done away with every sovereignty, authority, and power. For he must be king until he has put all his enemies under his feet, and the last of the enemies to be destroyed is death. For everything is to be put under his feet. The word of the Lord. with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and went as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judah. She went into Zachariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, of all women, you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honored with a visit from the mother of my Lord? For the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Yes, blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord and my spirit exults in God my savior because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid. Yes, from this day forward, all generations will call me blessed for the Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. And his mercy reaches from age to age for those who fear him. He has shown the power of his arm. He has routed the proud of heart. He has pulled down princes from their thrones and exalted the lowly. The hungry he has filled with good things. The rich sent empty away. He has come to the help of Israel, his servant, Mindful of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, of his mercy to Abraham and his descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
65 years ago, this autumn, during the Jubilee year of 1950, Pope Pius XII solemnly declared the Assumption of Mary to be a divinely revealed dogma of the Church. He said that the Immaculate Mother of God, the Ever-Virgin Mary, having completed the course of her life, was assumed, body and soul, into heavenly glory. His historic words were marked by great celebration, even though he wasn't actually saying anything about Mary that wasn't already widely accepted in Christian tradition. The fathers of the church had always spoken of Mary's assumption. The great theologians and spiritual writers had been reflecting on it for centuries. It was the subject of beautiful works of art, poetry, hymns, and of course, for hundreds of years, people had been praying the fourth glorious mystery of the rosary, the assumption of Our Lady into heaven. So why did the Holy Spirit prompt the church in the middle of the 20th century to highlight Mary's assumption? I think it was because the world was emerging from some of the most dark and devastating years ever known, the terrible tragedy of the Second World War, where 80 million people had been killed, where we had the horrific Holocaust and the merciless dropping of atomic bombs on civilians. I'm convinced that Pope Pius was trying to get us to think of Mary as the model and inspiration for the world, as the beauty of human dignity, showing the true potential of every human being. It was a time when we would have been forgiven for believing the very worst about humanity. But Mary revealed what is best in us. It was a time when we could have so easily given in to despair. But she was the queen of peace, the cause of our joy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. In her yes at the Annunciation, Mary had consecrated her life completely to God, and she made that yes over and over again during her life, especially as she watched her son dying on the cross and saw the worst that humanity could hurl at him. So wasn't it obvious that God would ensure that Mary's sacred body wouldn't experience the corruption of the grave. Wasn't it so fitting that she who had experienced that sword of sorrow could now look upon him as he sits with his father? But this privilege wasn't meant simply as a reward for Mary. Her assumption was also intended to be a sign of hope and comfort for all of us because God calls us too to consecrate our lives to him as Mary did. God calls us to do his will rather than our own will as she did so well. I think that's what St. Peter meant when he wrote those famous words, you are a consecrated nation, a people set apart. He was saying that to all of us. We are all to be consecrated, to be different. In the early church, people noticed the Christians were different. See how these Christians love one another, people said. And I know it's not easy for us nowadays to set ourselves apart and to stand out from the crowd. There's a huge pressure on all of us to conform to the culture and values and attitudes around us. In recent weeks, I've been reading the new encyclical of Pope Francis, Laudato Si, which is about care for the earth, our common home. And in it, Pope Francis describes what he calls the cry of the earth because of the terrible plundering of its resources. He talks about the cry of the poor who are suffering most because of the degradation of the environment. And he asks us, what kind of world are we leaving to our children and grandchildren? And in his letter, he actually sounds a bit like the first St. Peter because he calls us to be a people set apart, 
people who live our lives differently, people who are prophetic in our lifestyle by the way we are moderate in our use of the world's resources. Pope Francis calls us Christians to reject the thinking that just amassing things and pleasures can give us lasting joy. Instead, he says, learn to appreciate the beauty of nature and creation. Realize how much all of us in this planet need each other. Be at peace with who we are and what we have and own. Don't always be looking for more. Savor each moment of every day, he says. Be like what St. Therese said, someone who does the little things well and with love. And don't be afraid to try to make do with a little less. Typically, Pope Francis is in no way depressing, even though he's talking about such a perplexing global problem. He says, all is not lost. Human beings, whilst they're capable of the worst, they're also capable of rising above themselves and choosing what is good and making a new start. Deep in our hearts, God's grace can be at work. And Pope Francis appeals to all of us not to forget the dignity which is ours. No one can take that away from us, he says. His words remind me once more of the meaning of Mary's assumption that the victory of human dignity is possible over the very worst that greed and sin and corruption can do to this world of ours. In fact, Pope Francis draws attention to Mary's assumption. He says, she now cares from heaven with great affection for this wounded world, just as she cared for her son. She grieves for the sufferings of the poor and for this world which is so easily laid waste by humanity. She has been carried up to heaven and now she is the mother and queen of all creation. So once more, Mary has been seen as the model for all of us who want to consecrate our lives to God and be a people set apart. She's our inspiration, our sign of sure hope. I know that if you try to consecrate your life to God, if you try to be someone who's different and set apart, you do have to give up some things, some of the immediate pleasures and promises of happiness that this world can offer but you gain something, you find something very precious, and that is a life with God, which can be immensely fulfilling and joyful. During this year of consecrated life, I'd like to pay tribute to the women and men of Ireland who have chosen to consecrate themselves totally to God, to lose something of themselves by becoming a member of a religious congregation of sisters, brothers, or priests. Although their numbers are smaller nowadays, our religious in Ireland still make an immense contribution to this country through their apostolates and charisms like in education, healthcare, chaplaincy, working with marginalized people, caring for the elderly, helping those with special needs, being actively engaged in parish ministry, or maybe just dedicating their whole day to prayer and contemplation. Today, here in Knock, I want to say on behalf of the whole church in Ireland to all our religious sisters, brothers, and priests, we love you. We love your vocation and the mission that you're carrying out among us. Because in so many ways, the consecrated life reflects the presence of Mary. She was the perfect model of the consecrated life. So when you see our sisters, brothers, and priests giving their lives totally to God, in some ways, you're seeing Mary's undivided love for God and her surrender to God's will. 
her acceptance of obedience to God's word, her life of contemplation, her sacrificing of earthly pleasures, her witness to faith and hope and charity, and of course, her joy. Because consecrated life, whether you do it as a lay person or whether you give yourself totally as a religious sister or brother or priest, it's a life of joy. And this year in Ireland, we've had a group of young people called the Rise of the Roses. Maybe you've seen them here today in Knock. And these young women have been going around Ireland trying to celebrate religious life as a life of joy and love and happiness and a great vocation for a young person today. Ten weeks ago, the girls of the Rise of the Roses team began a tour of Ireland in Louth at the shrine of St. Bridget in Fart. And they've been visiting convents all around the country, meeting with other young people and listening to the sisters' stories and sharing their hospitality and praying with them the rosary and adoration. And today the Rise of the Roses tour finished here in Knock at the shrine of the Golden Rose, the Queen of Ireland. And I want to say a prayer tonight with you for all our young people who are probably searching for a way of life for themselves, a vocation that will bring them fulfillment and joy and happiness. And I'm conscious that so many of our young people got their leave insert results or their A-level results this week. I hope and pray tonight that they will be able to find fulfillment in their lives in whatever path God shows them and that they may choose to consecrate themselves in some ways to God in their daily lives. So Lord, tonight, I thank you for calling all of us to follow you closely and especially for the witness of those who've chosen a vocation to the consecrated life. Lord, continue to inspire some of our sons and daughters to serve you as religious sisters, brothers, or priests. Show us, Lord, your plans for the church in Ireland. Give us all the grace we need to wake up the world to your love. Mary, Golden Rose, Queen of Ireland, we look forward with great hope to a new springtime for the faith in Ireland. Help all of us here tonight to find our true calling in life and help us to be a consecrated nation, a people set apart. Our Lady of Knock, pray for us. Queen assumed into heaven, pray for us. I invite you to stand and say with me the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God our Father, as we gather this evening on the Feast of Mary's Assumption, we bring all our prayers before you in confidence, knowing that that you are listening to all our intentions. For Pope Francis and all who minister in the church, may they lead in faith and serve in love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For religious sisters and brothers and all in consecrated life, may the fruit of their labor shine in our church. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
for vocations to religious life and priesthood. May all who are called by God have the courage and generosity to walk in faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our young people who have received their Leaving Cert results, may they be guided by the Holy Spirit and be fulfilled in life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who have come to knock on this feast of the Assumption of Mary, for pilgrims, travellers, invalids, may our pilgrim journey help us to walk together in faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the faithful departed, especially deceased religious and all the dead, May they rest in the peace of the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. This evening, Lord, we pray for those who are suffering all over the world. Lord, hear us. Father in heaven, listen to all the prayers that we make to you tonight in confidence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll now have the after collection. So I ask you to pass the collection bags for the roses, the stewards and handmaids uh, hand them out. Thank you sincerely for your generosity to help with the daily upkeep of the shrine here.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts, aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and as a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. <laughs> created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit Graciously may call these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed Apostle, the glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, and with your servant Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and Planeha dar droru agus briha jay dar jagask, tashe de vishnach agin ara, arnahar atar nyar, donefer danem, go daga da riat, donenter da haller and talo, marnenter and yar, arnar and lehul tor duin in yer, agus mat duna vera, marwahemichna dar vekun fein, agus nalik shinigahu, a ser shinua. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Now, friends, for the distribution of Holy Communion, can I ask you to come forward, please, uh, to the priests that will, and Eucharistic ministers that will be surrounding the sanctuary. Can I ask you to do so through the central aisle only and leave the side aisles to return to your seats? And please let the row in front of you come forward, etc., uh, to uh, add to the ease of movement and the safety of that. Those of you who are confined to wheelchairs or the front line, if you remain where you are, do not come forward. A priest will come to you. Those who can only receive from the chalice can do so at the back of the altar.
And so now, friends, if you'd like to join me in the recitation of the Novena to Our Lady of Knock, at this time we bring our intention, whatever they may, that might be this evening, before Our Lady in this prayer. So I ask you to join me, please. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to his Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who lives in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. Our Lady of Knock, Queen of Ireland, you give hope to your people in a time of distress and comfort them in sorrow. You have inspired countless pilgrims to pray with confidence to your divine Son, remembering his promise, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. Help me to remember that we are all pilgrims on the road to heaven. Fill me with love and concern for my brothers and sisters in Christ, especially those who live with me. Comfort me when I am sick, lonely, or depressed. Teach me how to take part ever more reverently in the Holy Mass. Give me a greater love of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Pray for me now and at the hour of my death. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Saint Joseph, chosen by God to be the husband of Mary, protector of the Holy Family, the guardian of the church. Protect all families in their work and recreation and guard us on our journey through life. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Saint John, beloved disciple of the Lord, faithful priest, teacher of the word of God, help us to hunger for the word, to be loyal to the mass, and to love one another. Lamb of God, Our Lady of Knock, Refuge of Sinners, Queen Assumed into Heaven, Queen of the Rosary, Mother of Nazareth, Queen of Virgins, Help of Christians, Health of the Sick, Queen of Peace, Our Lady, Queen and Mother, Our Lady, Mother of the Church. And we pause now for a moment and we place that particular need or intention into the loving care of Our Lady. With the angels and the saints, let us pray. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to his Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who lives in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. I to stand, please, for the final prayer of the Mass. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. So now, friends, can I ask you to be seated, please, for a few moments. And now, as we've concluded the Mass, and just before we finish with our final, uh, please, God, we'll get out now for our rosary procession.
Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. It is the Oremus. Deus qui nobis sub sacramento mirabum, passionis tu e memoriam rena Christi, tribu Ita nos corporis et sanguinis tui sacra misteria veneraris, ut redemptionis tue fructo, in nobis jugitas sensiamus, qui vivis et regnas in secula seculorum. So now, friends, can I invite you, wherever you can do so, if you're able to do so, to stand in honor and reverence of the Blessed Sacrament. We take this time as a time of healing for ourselves personally, and especially maybe for those who are sick here present, for those whom we remember who are confined to homes, nursing homes, and hospitals, all who are ill in mind, body, or spirit. Lord, touch with your healing hand all who labor and are overburdened among us tonight. Let your spirit bring to all who are sick wholeness in body and healing of heart. Relieve the sufferings of all who live with continuous pain. Hear our prayers for everyone attending doctors and hospitals. Surround with love those handicapped in mind or body and all elderly people. With faith in your power to bring healing, we pray for children who are sick. Lord, we come to you in our brokenness, wounded in our relationships, wounded by our memory of painful experiences in times past, wounded by sin and guilt in our lives today. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. You came to feed the lonely with your company, to feed the sad with your hope, your love touched all you met. You helped them change and grow. You nourished them with your love and led them to the Father. Your love opened them to the spirit of love, and as we meet you, the bread of life, feed us, we pray, with that love. Lead us to the Father. Open us to your Holy Spirit so that we can care for others and help them grow in your love. Stay with us, Lord Jesus, as night has fallen, and be our companion on our way. Set our hearts on fire with new hope, so that we may recognize you in the scriptures and in the breaking of bread. 
Jesus, we believe in you, we hope in you, we love you. Strengthen our faith, renew our hope and love, and grant our prayers. Touch with your healing love, O Lord, all who feel the hurt of life's wounds. Long ago, when people prayed to you for healing, you listened to them, bless them, and answer their prayer. Heal us now of our sinfulness and of the hatred that divides us. Take away our hardness of heart. Open our eyes, which are often blind to the needs of others. Remove our selfishness and our greed. Give us self-control at all times and fill our hearts with your eternal love. Jesus, we ask you now to heal us, to bless us, and to fill us with your peace. Let the sacrament of your body and blood bring healing to us all, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Now, friends, thankfully, we will be able to get out for our rosary procession tonight. Candle lights. So if you have any candles there, please light them as we're heading outside. And can I ask you to exit the basilica using the back doors, please, where I'm pointing, and then join us at the front. We will conclude our procession at the Apparition Chapel.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O Lord, open my lips. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The five glorious mysteries. The first glorious mystery, the resurrection. The angel spoke to the woman. You must not be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was nailed to the cross. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are most need of thy mercy.
second glorious mystery, the Ascension. Then he led them out of the city as far as Bethany, where he raised his hands and blessed them. As he was blessing them, he departed from them and was taken up into heaven. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are most need of thy mercy. third glorious mystery, the coming of the Holy Spirit. They saw what looked like tongues of fire coming out, and each person there was touched by a tongue. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are most need of thy mercy. Fourth glorious mystery, the Assumption of Mary into heaven. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exults in God my Saviour, because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, 
the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are most need of thy mercy. Fifth glorious mystery, the crowning of Our Lady, Queen of, of Heaven. Mary's dignity is a sign of God's power. He has pulled down princes from their thrones and exalted the lowly. The hungry he has filled with good things, and the rich sent away empty. Arnyahar, Hathar, Nyav, Ganefa, Danam, Gadaga, the Riat, Ganenta, the Heller, and Talav, Marienta, Ernyav. She the Vaha Wira, Tholon de Grosta, Thon Tirna Lath, Is Banaha Hua Jumano, Agus is Banaha Thoro de Vrunya Isa. She the Vaha Wira, Tholon de Grosta, Thon Tirna Lath, Is Banaha Hua Jumano, Agus is Banaha Thoro de Vrunya Isa. She the Vaha Wira, Tholon de Grosta, Thon Tirna Lath, is Banaha Hua Jumano, Agus is Banaha Thara de Vrunya Isa. She the Vaha Awira, Tholon de Grosta, Thon Tirna Lath. Is Banaha Hua Jumano, Agus is Banaha Thara de Vrunya Isa. She the Vaha Awira, Tholon de Grosta, Thon Tirna Lath. Is Banaha Hua Jumano, Agus is Banaha Thara de Vranya Isa. She the Vaha Wira, a Tholon de Grosta, Thon Tirna Lath. Is Banaha Hua Jumano, Agus is Banaha Thara de Vranya Isa. She the Vaha Wira, Tholon de Grosta, 
Thorn Tier and Alath, is Banaha Hua Jimano, August is Banaha Thora the Vranya Isa. Share the Vahara Wira, Thalon de Grosta, Thorn Tier and Alath, is Banaha Hua Jimano, August is Banaha Thora the Vranya Isa. Share the Vahara Wira, Thalon de Grosta, Thorn Tier and Alath, is Banaha Hua Jimano, August is Banaha Thora the Vranya Isa. She the Vahara Wira, a Thalon de Grosta, Thorn Tier and Alath, is Banaha Hua Jimano, August is Banaha Thora the Vranya Isa. Glower Donaha, Augustan Wach, Augustan Spirit Nave. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are most need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, O most gracious Advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us, and after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life, grant, we beseech thee, that meditating upon these mysteries, the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So now, friends, just before we conclude, and I invite uh, His Grace to bless any uh, religious objects you may happen to have with you tonight, and to conclude with the final prayer, I'd like to thank all of you for attending tonight and for being with us for such an enjoyable and uplifting uh, ceremony. I'd like to thank all the concelebrating priests and all who were involved in the ceremony tonight. I'd also like to extend uh, a, a very warm and uh, I think on behalf of all of us, an uh, uh, thank you to our outstanding choir, the Dunmore Choir with their director, Joan MacDonnell, organizer, David Ford, and soloists, Martin Silk and Mary Flaherty. Just in case the choir inside who can hear me can't hear the clapping, there was a very large clap out here uh, for you. So thank you very much. It's one of, one of, the, of the best choirs that really comes to, comes to knock here. And we're very, very happy. I uh, congratulate as well Father uh, Fergal Cunyon, who's the parish priest of Dunmore and who's here with us tonight on them as well. So thanks to you all. Uh, tomorrow we have... Our third day, it is the El Fin of Pilgrimage, so the afternoon session will be led by Bishop Kevin Dorn, and tomorrow night then our session will be led, uh, Chief Celebrant and Preacher will be Father Peter Murphy, who is National Director of Accord, uh, the Family and Marriage uh, Guidance uh, Council of the Church. So uh, we have that to look forward to. So please God, we will see you back again at some point tomorrow or over the course of the next few days. And I invite uh, His Grace now, the Archbishop, Archbishop Eamon, to bless any religious objects you may happen to have with you and to uh, conclude with the final prayer. Almighty Father, bless these medals and religious objects. May the saving presence of Christ be in the hearts of those who use them and in the homes in which they are placed. I bless them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's been a great honor to be with you today here on the second day of the Novena. And it's touching to see so many families represented here in Knock on the Feast of the Assumption. Over the course of the Novena, many thousands of families will come here to Knock. And I know that all of you have your own special intentions. In the final blessing, I'd like to offer this blessing for you and for your families, wherever they are tonight. And I know that some of you may be worried about some members of your families. 
Maybe you've lost touch with someone in your family. I know that in some cases, families have broken up. We're very conscious of any family tonight who's experiencing sorrow or grief because of bereavement or struggling because of illness or economic difficulties. Indeed, any of the trials and tribulations that can be in any family. We're also giving thanks to God for the joys and happiness of family life. And Pope Francis has asked all of us to pray for the intentions of the forthcoming Synod on the Family, which will be taking place in Rome in 50 days' time. As you know, last autumn, the Synod considered the pastoral challenges facing families all over the world. This autumn, the Synod will be looking at the vocation of the family and the mission of the family in the church and in the world. So please pray for the intentions of the Synod. Even one Hail Mary every day over the next 50 days. Sure, that'll make up a full rosary of intentions for the Synod. I invite you now to bow your heads and pray for God's blessing for you and for your family. Father, in your great mercy, help your pilgrim people to remain close to you in prayer and give them a true love for each other. We have come to knock today to give thanks and to petition you for our needs. We have prayed and celebrated the Eucharist together. As we journey home from Knock, keep alive in us the memory of your love. May we bring from this place strength to carry our burdens and zeal to live the gospel. Through the prayers of Our Lady of Knock, we are confident that you will watch over us always and fill our hearts with your love. Grant this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I invite all the priests present here now to join with me in giving the final blessing of the pilgrimage. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our pilgrimage to Knock Shrine has come to an end. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. There were people of all ages gathered round the gable wall, poor and humble men and women, little children that you call. We are gathered here. Joseph at your side.